Today we're going to spend some time talking about price. And I had a realization that a lot of you have built their products and are already ready to launch them. But then you ask yourself, how much do I charge for them? And a lot of entrepreneurs are going to fall into the trap of mispricing their product because pricing strategy, although it doesn't sound sexy, is one of the cornerstones to your success. So today we're going to break down what it takes to price the course or whatever product you have properly. And I'm going to tell you that there is a sweet spot, that there is the magic price. So let's get into this. Now, in order for us to unveil this magic price, we have to get into the discussion about details. And those details cannot be just verbalized. And I can't just wave my hands and make you understand them. And for this, I invite you to join me in my trusty Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to go through some of the things that really impact price for digital and online products in general. It's not a surprise that a lot of people have this magic number of $10,000 in the head of the money that they want to make. Maybe it's $10,000 a day. Maybe it's $10,000 a month. It does not matter. $10,000. So how much are you selling your product for? How much do you want to be selling your product for or how much should you be selling your product for? That is the answer today. So let's take a look. What if our product costs $5 and our goal is, like I said, $10,000 a period? Well, quick math will tell us that in order for us to get to that number, we need to attract 2,000 people who press that submit, purchase, buy, get it now button in order for us to make the $10,000. That is a lot of people. But what if you sell your course for $49.99? Oh, wow, look at that. Now you only need to convince 200 people to click that button and buy your product. That is a substantial, substantial drop. So with the same rationale, we should be saying, okay, so why don't we price our course at $149? That's only 67 sales. That's amazing. So if we push this idea further, you get to a point where you're saying, okay, you know what? $299 it is. I can definitely get 33 people to click on that button. Not so fast, because in this simplified example, we are forgetting one thing, and that thing is conversion. So let's talk about conversion for a second, and I'm going to jump to a different spreadsheet here. Anything that's not a zero dollars, anything that is not free, is going to have a much lower conversion rate than when it is free. And even when it is free, your product is not going to be bought by or downloaded by all of the people who see it. If we imagine that something is free, zero dollars, a 50% conversion rate is good. In fact, that's excellent conversion rate. Most of the time you see something in the ballpark of um, 20%, 15 to 20%. Again, People are not inclined to click anything, especially when they have to provide an email. When you price your product at anything above zero, even if it's a dollar, what you're asking people to do is you're asking them to provide not only their email, you're asking them to provide your credit card information, you're asking them to trust your website, and you're telling them that they will actually receive something of value. Now, one can ask, one dollar is not really something of a consideration. Be that as it may, it is still expected to deliver value because you have that transaction. So you can see the, the rate, the conversion rate falls to, let's say, 10 percent, might be even lower. And if we just take a look at how this evolves, what I want to show you is that 
the magic of human psyche actually plays tricks on us. And when the price goes up, one dollar, five, nine ninety nine, it does not affect your conversion rate as much. And then we have those magical breaks. Nine ninety nine and ten dollars, although their difference is only one cent, actually has a bigger impact on the conversion rate. And that goes for nineteen ninety nine versus twenty dollars. $49.99 versus $50. Our rational process is being clouded by that first digit. So when it says $49.99, the brain says, oh, it's $40, give and take. And this is why you're seeing the differences. In fact, let's take a look. What I'm trying to get at, as the price increases all the way to, let's say, you have some amazing, phenomenal program that you sell at $10,000 a pop, the conversion rate doesn't drop as fast. And let me prove that to you. So what you see here is this column shows you the difference in price. What is the difference in price between $5 and $1? It's 400%. You've increased your price fourfold. What's the increase between 99 and five? Well, that's almost twofold. So it's 100%. Note here, when the price goes from zero to one, your conversion rate plummets by 80%. But when your price increases by 400%, your conversion rate only drops by 20%. And this is true. Look at this. When you go from, uh, from $9.99 to $10, it's virtually a 0% change. One cent but your conversion rate still drops. Okay, maybe you don't like numbers, but in this case, you might have to. I also want to share with you, this is how many people you need to sell to at this price point. So at $1, you will need to sell to 10,000 people. But at $10,000, <laughs> only one person needs to click that button and you are achieved your goal. For those of you who are more visual, let me show you to you how it looks on the chart. Look at that. When you had zero, you had a 50% conversion rate and then boom, it falls all the way down and then it trickles. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm not gonna take it all the way out to 10,000. I'm just actually gonna stick at 250. And that is gonna paint you a different picture. You see these steps? So those steps in price, and if we introduce more prices, you'll see those steps even better refined. They show you those breakpoints, at which point a much lower number of people are going to be buying your course. And if I take away this uh, craziness of uh, $0 and just go from, you see it even clearer how that price steps. But the point of this is, if you don't understand uh, these numbers, if you can't follow this logic, one thing you have to remember is that as you increase your price, the number of people who will be buying your course drops, but it does not drop by the same percentage as your price goes up. So you can push your price higher without losing those conversions. If we're clear with this, let's go back to a previous example and talk about something else that's very important. Here we said we would have to get 33 sales, right? Yeah, that's mathematically, that's accurate. Now, what that doesn't take into account and something very, very important is how many people do you need to touch, talk to, get interested in your blog post, get to respond and follow you on Twitter in order to get down to the 33%. What I'm talking about is the sales funnel because it's not only about selling it to 33 people, it's about how many people do you need to attract first in order to get the sale. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we have a funnel where we go from awareness, consideration and decision. This is where people just finding out about you and this is when they pay you money. That journey can be very long and I talk at length about that journey in some of my other videos. That journey can be very short. But what I wanna show you is this. 
Let's take a look. Remember that $5 price point? How many people do you think can go from awareness? In other words, they read and follow you on Facebook or they watch your TikTok videos to consideration. Oh, they actually looked at your profile. They've actually read what your sales page uh, says. Well, let's be, let's be generous. Let's say it's 50%, which means that traffic to your product is 5,000. What's the average conversion rate at $5? Well, let's take a look. At $5, we said the average conversion rate is 8%. That is probably a tad bit high. And um, the conversion rates have been falling. If you were doing course selling in, let's say, 2008, your conversion rates could easily be at 8 to 10%. The more people getting into this space, the introduction of platforms such as Udemy, uh, they diluted the ability for you to convert. So that rate is lower, but let's stick with 8% just for the sake of argument. And so what you see is 10,000 people need to know that you exist, somehow be following you, or at least knowing that you have something to offer for 5,000 people to land on your website. And then you will get 400 people at this overall conversion rate to be buying your course at $5 and you're going to be making only $2,000 in sales and you're going to be $8,000 short. So you see, it's not just saying, oh, I'm going to get 33 people to buy my course. And this is where pricing comes into play. What if we go back to this sheet and we pick a different price point? Let's say $49.99 and that conversion rate should be 2.9. And that conversion rate, when we're talking about this, we are... I made a mistake in my original recording. The conversion rate is actually from the number of people who see your sales page to the number of people who buy. So traffic to sales. So let's play out this scenario. This is not correct. That's overly aggressive. Let's say your conversion rate is going to be 2.8%. So the overall overall conversion between of those people who know you to the sale is 1%. But of the people, which is the true conversion rate that people talk about, of the people who saw your offer, how many bought? That's this 2.8. So with this number, you're going to make 98 sales and you're going to be about $5,000 short of your goal, which means that to make your goal, you will need to have around, you will need to have 20,000 people following you, knowing that you exist and at least beginning to trust you in order to make the $10,000 in sales. 20,000 followers is a lot. 20,000 followers is a lot on any platform, be it YouTube, be it Twitter, be it Facebook. What's the conversion rate at 249? That's 1.8. So that's 6,350 people that need to know you exist. Now, this is more doable, much more doable than the previous calculations that we've done. And you only need to make 40 sales. And then comes the marketing part. How good is your offer? How good are you at convincing people that this is something that they need? If you are very good, then going through this funnel is going to be easier. What is their perception? That is another thing to think about. If you're selling something for $5, the perception is it's cheap. It's not something to think about. It's not something that is going to be a massive consideration versus something that's being sold for $1,000. Now, that is a significant amount of money, let alone if you exceed $1,000. Then, what's your authority? How do people trust that whatever money you're charging, it doesn't matter whether it's five or 5000 how do they know they can trust you? Remember I had made a video on content? That's where why content is so important. Those touch points that people have in that awareness stage when they read what you have to say, when they understand your opinions, this is what builds up your authority and makes people go through that funnel faster. And finally, expectations. What do people expect? When you're selling something for $5, 
expectations are low and it's again sure five dollars that's fine expectations when you're offering something for 249 dollars are completely different so let's simplify this a bit let's forget the awareness the consideration the decision let's just talk about your sales page your offer number of clicks of all of the people who visit if you have $200 product you need 50 people and 27 almost 2800 people need to land on your uh, page makes sense is it a lot is it a little that's up to you to decide and that's up to your craft as a marketer to attract them how good does your web page convert what are the components of it we're actually going to talk about that in a future video but for now let's assume that everything is top notch you might want to say why wouldn't i just push this number all the way to a thousand dollars which means and you need to attract only 1200 people that's much more doable I'm just going to go with $1,000. You shouldn't, especially if you're starting out. You should not try to offer a $1,000 product, and here's why. There are two major reasons. One, if you're a solopreneur, it cannot be done in high quality by yourself, especially if you're in just starting out or in the first three years of your experience. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you're not capable. You probably are. But the expectations, remember we talked about expectations. Expectations of those buying a $1,000 course are way higher. Quality, equipment that you use, the editing, the lighting, the text, the delivery, the additional information, the additional materials, the studio, the sound all of those components that make a good course become important and this is definitely not a situation where you'll be able to get away with a headless ai generated course can you get somebody to buy it of course you can everyone can at any point in time but the reviews remember social proof is the single biggest item that accelerates your course sales your product sales, your service sales. As soon as people are willing to talk on your behalf and say, hey, that was fantastic. You should take this course. You're exponentially growing. So you only have one chance to impress a person. And if you're putting together a $1,000 course on a cheap, chances are your reviews will suck and your course will not sell. And that's how it works. So remember in the beginning, I told you I found that sweet spot. I found that magic price point that works well. And that price point is in the vicinity between $139 and $199, below that $200 mark. What makes that price point amazing is that you don't set your expectations too high you are able to deliver this material all by yourself with the tools available online. You can do this in a headless format when you just write the text and have the AI voice generated avatar deliver it. You can do it even as a text course because there are some very heavy and practical courses that really command that price point. So it's doable. And again, that is a very healthy price point that you don't need too many people converting in order for you to reach that magical $10,000 mark. So let's take a look here. So this is my website. I'm just gonna take you on a little tour. And if you follow me, in one of my blog posts, I talk about the subject of content generation and how you can take hours off your work and just go from one YouTube video to WordPress, to Medium posts, to tweets, threads, long form threads, and TikToks, and go as far as podcast. All of that is explained in the course, but how do I price it? Because we're not talking about the course itself. The way I price it on my landing page is taking into account everything we talked about. 
there is one price point at $47 with a limited number of copies available, depending on when you watch it. If you decide to check it out, that may not be available. And then there's the regular version that's priced at $147. Now I have a trick here and let me explain what the $47 price point does. $47 price point, as you recall, commands a higher conversion rate which means more people can buy it. And even though it's limited, those people have not made in their minds the same investment as buying it for 147. In fact, they registered this as getting a deal. When they go through the course and then they understand that they can cut down days of generating content into mere hours and sometimes minutes, they're gonna be happy. I will have satisfied the reason that they bought this course and they will leave positive reviews. Positive reviews becomes that social proof that begin to justify the price, whatever price you're beginning to charge. And when the 700 copies run out, though that social proof that I've accumulated justifies the 147 price point. So you can see that the pricing strategy is not only twofold, it's actually threefold. Offer a discount and entice purchase with a limited uh, time offer which drives that scarcity feeling into social proof and justification for the higher price point. All of this combined obviously builds audience. Okay, let's wrap this up. We talked about that you need to consider what's happening at the top level of the funnel, at the middle of the funnel, and how many people actually click on the buy button. We talked about how conversion rates are impacted by price. We talked about how price point determines how many people need to see your product. All of those things in a package lead to one conclusion. $149 is where you should be starting. Do leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you felt that this was useful. I would appreciate a follow and a subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.